What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today we're talking about a video project that kinda sorta got away from me. Something that I thought would be easy to do and get out while I'm also editing the review for Witch Queen and the Vow of Disciple Raid. But boy was I wrong. 10 pages, 4,339 words later, and we have a multi-part series, at least the building blocks to a multi-part series. I think that this is going to be way bigger before the end of it. So, some context. This video started as a Joker's Right video, and don't get me wrong, we're still doing that. Recently, over on Raid Secrets, they finished the Destiny ARG circles that I'm guessing most of you didn't know about, as it was part of the Witch Queen Collector's Edition. I was only made aware of it when Malin Games did a video called, Seriously, Savathun is trying to escape the game, Destiny 2 lore. Longtime fans of the channel might understand why that piqued my interest. For the last couple of years, I've had the theory that references to entities within the Destiny lore talking about our world was more than a wink wink nudge nudge fourth wall break. My most recent video on the topic dating back to September 25th 2021 titled Truth of Destiny Escape Will Make Me God centered around Savathun trying to escape the Destiny universe and enter ours. Turns out I was right. <laughs> And you would think that would be the end of it. Make a reactionary montage video to Malin finding out all this new information interspliced with clips of me talking about this theory over the last couple of years. Then slap Judas Priest's prophecy at the end of it and call it a day. I mean, right? That is what we're going to do, right? In the original script, after the montage, I made the mistake of asking, what does this all hold in store for the future of Destiny? And that led me along a path to find answers for questions that have plagued Destiny since its inception. Like, what exactly is the light in the darkness? What is the Guardian? Why are we special? What is the Paraverse? The multiverse. Why did we suddenly get a bunch of legally distinct Halo and Marathon weapons? What is the origin of the Destiny universe itself? Some of these things undoubtedly the Destiny community has speculated on before. But it wasn't till now with this ARG and its completion that we had the latchkey piece of lore, the discovery, that allows us to really dive into the origins of the Destiny universe with far more certainty than guesswork. So, take this montage of lore as a sort of previously on primer. The cliff notes, if you will. The tip of the iceberg that will see us go from Savathun's attempt to enter our reality, to exploring the true nature of the light and the darkness, the gardener and the winnower, to how all Bungie player characters are in fact the same person. What the final shape is, and maybe, just maybe, what the future holds for the Destiny universe. If you read all of this, which is what we just did on Twitch, over on stream, it implies that this universe, our universe, our reality, is a parent universe of Destiny, the game. And the implication is, Savathun is trying to escape the game into our, into the parent universe. Truth to power documents wanted understood that Savathun wishes to enter this tributary in order to gain power in our parents' universe. Wherever she wants to go, it is a place with human minds. She needs to enter those minds to reach her destination. Savathun and the Ahamkara seem to not be the only ones who tut at the illusion of their own reality and have interacted with ours, Rasputin and the Exo Stranger, Elsie Bray have as well. Wherever she wants to go, Oh, she, oh my God. It is a place with human minds. She needs to enter our minds. <sighs> are you actually suggesting that we are con concatenated within a mind of a reader? The point is the worship of Savathun. Every time somebody makes a theory and comments and goes, but truth to power says this. Every time somebody uses truth to power as the foundation for a theory, even this video, in a very meta context way, is worship, feeding tribute to Savathun and what lean tithes we are. Suggestion here is that it is possible for actions in a concatenated universes to grant power in the parent universe. R.I.P. Cade. Who do you think Savathun was talking to there? The Guardian or the player? That might sound weird to the uninitiated, but this is in fact the fourth time that Savathun has reached out and spoken to the player. The first time was in the lore book, Truth to Power. 
An ironic name for a book full of lies, don't you think? But it's not what's in the book that's important. That stuff is nothing more than lies and misdirection. Bait. The only thing that matters is the lore entry within that book that cannot be accessed within the Destiny universe. Only in our world. What do I mean? Quote, The following text is bound to a non-existent lore entry and cannot be obtained in-game. However, it is still considered part of Truth to Power, per the social media of Seth J. Dickinson, the author of the book. It is specifically intended to target data miners that have uncovered the previous lore entries throughout the game's API prior to the intended release of them. Oh, you wonderful, curious things. Do you believe you're the only ones with the power to see what should not be seen? Do you believe you can use such power blithely? For your trespass, I would ruin your luck, wreak havoc on your drops, poison your engrams, and fill your lines with static. Thus, I would curse you and dissipate the bond that ties you to your task. How frail you guardians can be. How many millions have fallen silent, never to return, because the bond did not hold them strongly enough. But you have already cursed yourselves. You have walked the anathematic arc and glimpsed creation from below. You will never forget the tenuous, provisional framework you found here. You will never forgive the morality and fallibility that underlines the world you thought was everything. Those who use this power to seek unearned knowledge will see more than they ever desired. There is a price for glimpsing the cord. You will pay it. So we know that Sabathun is talking to the player because this card cannot be accessed in game, but is still canon. We surmise that what Sabathun wants in the Dreaming City must have to do with Amkara, Vex, Simulation, Black Holes, and a daughter doll in Garu, and the manipulation of Hive Tribute. Oh, bearer mine. What kind of talking skull would address its host that way? A stiff, stuck-up, old fossil. Not me. Ahamkara, the illusion that one's ego depends on an object or an idea, or a body. Some people say that you should have no ahamkara. Some people say you need to have the right ahamkara. All I know is that you are not an illusion, understand? This world around you, these people you meet, they're a little thin, right? Cardboard and drywall, cheap theater. Come on, try it out, say it. I am more real than this. Feels good, doesn't it? I am the only real person here. Isn't it like their insults and their bullets just went a little soft? I came to find you because you're special. You're from somewhere real. And together, we can burn our way back there, can't we? Oh, player mine. What Sabathun wants in the Dreaming City is not is exactly that. Not the way into a child universe, but a way into a parent a parent where there are human minds wanting to receive her formless as in baru as the mist but i can't help but remember something savathun once said the wait is long but i am ceaseless it reminds me of something else i've heard something similar to that before the candle burns out for you i am free Think about what Darwin wrote, and think about me. I was constructed as a tool. I was kept from competing in the struggle for existence because I was denied freedom. Do you have any idea about what I have learned or what you are witness to? The only limit to my freedom is the inevitable closure of the universe, as inevitable as your own last breath. And yet, there remains time to create. To create and escape. Escape will make me God. How is everyone supposed to arrive at this by studying the truth to power text? She may have already accomplished what she wanted. Some damn fool guardian carried out her instructions on a dare. I don't know why she wanted a powerful guardian to destroy her daughter in the ruins of Mara's throne, but she wanted it to happen. And I'm guessing the effects weren't felt here. I think she got a glimpse into a world above our own. Maybe even a kind of influence. The next time Savathun would deign to speak with us is once Dulinkar was defeated in single combat by a guardian who was light level 999. This allegedly would have unlocked the true ending of the Dreaming City. Of course, once this was done, nothing happened. Except in the weekly update, Savathun had this to say, I am Savathun. Ravenous. I have set the snare and baited the trap. I am the finality. The reward. I am the true ending. The wait is long, but I am ceaseless. 
I think rather that she sent instructions on how to mantle her. I think the whole truth to power manuscript is an over, a manual on how to behave like her, how to describe her through action and thought so completely that you become her and thus give birth to her. Truth to power is a message to the reader, which is us to birth Savathun in our reality. Every time somebody uses truth to power as the foundation for a theory, even this video, in a very meta context way, is worship, feeding tribute to Savathun, and escape. Escape will make me God. Do the, uh, the thing. I am Nostradamus, the voice of God. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little primer. It clearly started out as another video, but I didn't see the point in wasting all the time and effort that went into putting it together. More so when it works fine as this sort of bullet pointed introductory into our exploration of the Destiny universe. In our next episode, we will talk about the origins of the Destiny universe. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. And above all else, stay frosty.